brothers and sisters in Dhamma, <coughs> uh, I was invited to give this talk uh, in 2017. I was almost to come at the last moment. I had to cancel because I was heading for Canada. And then 2018 also I accepted, but something else prevented me from coming here. So 2019, here I am here, that we booked Mr. Robert, Mr. Robert for about six months ago. So in fact, uh, I had something to go, but I said the chief that I cannot change this, this time. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm glad to be here. <coughs> so uh, today the topics is that uh, from miserable to preserable. None of us want to be in a miserable condition. You always want to be in a pleasurable condition. So it is a fact, whether we declare it or not, it is a fact that we always like to be in a pleasurable condition. <coughs> Buddhas were born not to teach us what is good, what is bad what is right, what is wrong, how to live a lay life, how to treat the wife, how to treat husband, how to respect elders. Buddhas are not born for teaching that. We always say that the Buddhas taught us to be good, to not to do this, but to do this. But Buddhas were not born to teach those things. Silabhata, the Buddhas were born. Na silabhata hai tung upajjanti tathagata. The Buddhas in Vitakka Santana Sutta, it is very clearly said, the Buddhas are not born to teach you what is wrong and what is right. What is good and what is bad? Attakarati nipada. But to teach something, three important things. The three important things is, it is always present, and it has been always, and it will be always. But due to certain things, we are unable to see these things properly. And these things are anicca, dukkha, anatta. So it is clear that Buddhas were born to teach these things. In general, people, I myself, I talk about anicca, dukkha, anatta, but I haven't seen. I feel there is a sorrow. I feel there is a pain. I feel that there is nothing. But I'm not yet convinced. So the Buddhas are born to convince, to show these three things. What is anicca? What is ana dukkha? What is anatta? So then Buddha has also a path. Sila, samadhi, panya. So that when one develops those things, then one can see those things. So the Buddha's mission is to show these three things and to show the path, to tread the path. Buddha so bhagava bodhaya dhamman deseti. Buddha so bhagava, Buddha having awakened, he teaches others to be awakened. Danto so bhagava dhammataya dhamman deseti. Having calmed himself, tranquilled himself. He teaches others to be calm or tame. Tinno so bhagava taranaya dhamman deseti. Having crossed the ocean of samsara, birth, death, birth, death, a cycle of birth, having crossed that. And Buddha teaches others to cross the samsara. Then, 
Parinibuto, so Bhagava, Parinibana, Dhamman, they say. Have enlightened. The Buddhas are there to teach others to enlighten. So the Buddha's mission and the vision is very clear. Vision is to show these things, and the mission is to teach you, encourage you to follow, the, uh, tread the path. Not necessarily to teach that don't do this and do follow this. But people might question, how then Buddha has taught certain things Avoid bad, do good in different suttas. Yes, there are. For example, uh, Mangala Sutra. You can. Eva me sutangi kan same baga sawat and virti jetavani anata pindika sara me eku devata. A devata, deity, divine beings having come. He posed this question, Buddha, what is? O oh Lord, oh Master, there are people, human beings and divine beings are concerned as to what are the blessings. So would you please teach us? Here the Buddha begins to teach what the blessings are. So these blessings come as an answer to the question of the gods, devas. So not necessarily Buddha came, but had to answer this question. So in those sutras, there are so many guidelines, directions, what is good, what is bad, what is right, what is wrong, what is to be done, what, how to respect teachers, elders, husband, wife, all these things come. So it is one way. As an answer to the question, then sometimes it's also spontaneous questions, answers answers from the Buddha when he sees a certain someday one day Buddha was going in the early morning somebody was having a dip deep in cold water the Buddha looked at him and said what are you doing I'm washing away my sins oh washing away some sins and even he said oh but it's about the fish in the water. They will be the most purified even <laughs> because they're always. So then Buddha say, north, south, east, west, left, right, parents, teachers, religious leaders, and uh, mother, father. These are the directions that we worship. Oh, that open eye. Oh, not there. No. So here the Buddha's answer to him came as a good guidelines for the family life. So Buddha didn't come with that simply to this world to teach them, but as an answer to the questions, here Buddha explained who the mother, why you should respect the parents, father, mother, how do you behave, conduct yourself in the presence of teachers, elders. So these are very important guidelines. So, so many teachers. Agikan Bharadvaja Sutra, Dhammika Sutra, Sigalovada Sutra, then uh, Mangala Sutra, Parabhava Sutra, Vasala Sutra, all these are enormous, fantastic guidelines for any society. So that's why these Americans here, there are no respect in those families. Parents, they do not care about children. Children do not care about themselves. When somebody is 14, 15, 16 years old, they kick them out of the house and find your own way. So, no respect between parents and children. Children do not respect parents. Parents do not care. So, so those people on those societies, they say, we do not want anything from the East. Give us only Sigaluva, the Sutra. That will help to build our society, which is collapsing due to lack of these noble qualities. So these are the most important things that we find in Buddha's teaching. But these things came not as a 
direct discourse from the Buddha, but it came as a answers to the question raised by the people that these are very valid and important. We want to know that people in the world they are looking for happiness, joy. So some they do not know what is happiness, some they do not know how to get that happiness, what will come out of having this happiness and what will bring me uh, any change in my life if there is happiness. So there are different ways of analyzing, interpreting the happiness. People sometimes they do not like the way they look at. They were born nice, beautiful, and handsome, but they say, I don't like the way I look. I really want to change. A British lady, a bank, a well-educated lady, recently slashed off her ears and shaved her hair. Then she asked, what happened? Because I'm not happy the way I look. I want to be happy. So I just slashed off my ears and cut off my hairs so that I would look like a dragon. So that's the way I like to be, and that's the happiness in my life. A lady in Florida, she was always complaining the eyesight, I have good clear eyesight, but I don't like, I want to be blind, so that I won't see things in the world that makes me crazy. She blinded herself. Can't imagine. And walking with his walking stick. This was on the front page of the newspapers. What is there? I want to be happy. That's the happiness I want. So that I will not see in the world. But didn't have the proper guidance. We would have taught her how to get the happiness. Then the blind people will be the most happiest person on earth if she thought that it was the right way to do this. So these are the things that people look for, different ways of getting happiness. In India, not very far away from the center I teach in Varanasi, there's a place that is only for yogis, so-called yogis, the brother Limbo is questioning me on the way. And so funny, to, funny things are taking place. So-called yogis, some of them, they are totally vegetarian, but they eat human flesh. But which is not vegetarian, I think. <laughs> but uh, yes, and that area you can't go. Some of them just leave their leg on the tree branch, and hours and hours, sometimes days, standing. Because the way of burning your passions, lust. Some standing in one leg, some hanging on a branch, some partly buried, and un unthinkable, unimaginable, the way they live. With all these methods they are trying to follow to kill the burn, the lust that we have. So we want to get rid of this lust and pain and so that we will be happy. So it is, people are different ways, they are looking for happiness. They were very talking about these yogis. One journey wrote a few days ago, a baby was drawn there and his body was floating. The Times of India reported. We later found that some bones uh, in the area where these yogis were in. They believe that these yogis consumed the flesh. Sometimes they use the human skull to drink the waters. 
So all these are different methods the world follow in different ways to gain happiness, see kind of happiness. So even at the time of the Buddha, they existed. The Buddha himself was struggling at the last moment, li at the last life, just for attaining the enlightenment. He also following that so-called rigid method. He didn't eat, sometimes just uh, one grain of chickpeas per day. And he said that, I felt sleepy. I was standing on one leg, but still I felt sleepy. Then I pulled my ears, I still felt sleepy. I pierced my eyes, still I felt sleepy. I bent down, my hair was falling. And I placed my hand on my belly. I felt as if I was placing my hand on my backbone, so thin. So it was a struggle. Can't it's beyond the comprehension what uh, difficulties, pain he undergo. So it was very difficult. So achieving this peace, highest happiness. So the people, in certain parts of the world, is still following the methods to get this physical, the mental happiness we call nectar. And that's what. A lot of people, while doing meditation, they just try to get it. A one CEO just pack up the bags and he said to, I'm leaving for three weeks. By the time I return, I will be in Nirvana. So hopeful. So expectations are too high by sacrifices, so limited, very minimum. So it's good to know how these things can be done. Great artists like Michael Jackson, then uh, Whitney Houston, many artists who died because they opted for drugs. They tried to alleviate their mental situation a little bit higher and in the attempt, they lost their life. A French singer, Dalida, a very wealthy lady. He said, I wealthy, I'm rich, I have everything, and everybody is at my call. But I'm missing something. That is the happiness. Le bonjour, le bonsoir. These are the words of the love, good morning, good morning, good evening. But I loaded with that, but I do not have the so-called peace in mind. So maybe I will find somewhere else and just committed suicide. Very sad, pathetic, foolish, unfarsighted decision what to do. These are the ways that people are trying to look for the ways to find meditate, uh, the peace. So peace has come. Uh, today it is the, the trend. They're everywhere. They talk about meditation. They talk about vipassana, samatha, uh, peace of mind. So it has become the trend, everybody is trying. Some are paying money, some are just de devoting, dedicating everything what they have. But still they find. They don't find. It's not something. I have told most of people, I, am, I don't have a family, I don't have wealth, I don't have a car, I don't have a house, I have nothing. But still I am at the attachment. It is easy for me to give up and leave the world, but I still have the attachment. So I can imagine those who have wealth, properties, families, how hard for them to live it. If I find it dis difficult myself, so how can imagine how hard it is for those who have wealth, families, and others. So these are the things that we need to think of. Kammaru rajata seva thoko thokan kani kani. 
all this attachment, desire, you have to give up little by little, slowly but gradually. Then we will be happy. And also it is very important to understand where this problem is. One day, one man came to Buddha and he told me, Oh Lord Buddha, I'm not a scholar. I'm a simple man. Please teach me simple Dhamma. <laughs> Something simple that I can understand. Buddha is a smile. He asked, uh, do you have a son? He was, uh, yes, I do have a son. What if he dies? Oh, Buddha, please don't say that. I can't bear it. My son to die, please don't say it. That's why. Because I feel very sad. It's very painful for me to. Uh -huh. Then Buddha asks, do you have a brother? Yes, I do. Is he having a son? Yes, he is also having a son. What if your brother's son dies? What if, how do you feel? Mm, I feel sad, but not as much as I feel for my own son. Ah, okay. Do you have a neighbor? Yes. Is he have, yeah, he's also having a son. What if his son dies? I don't feel. Hmm. Do you know people who have sons? Yes, many. What if their children, sons die? How do you feel? Oh, I don't feel at all. Uh -huh. Now, your son is also son. Your brother's son is also son. Neighbor's son is also son. Other son is also son, son, son sons. Why do you feel so? What is the problem? <gasps> they say, oh. Because my son, my I, and you keep away this I and my concept. So problem is not there. Problem is because I and my. Then he understood. Then Buddha went further. Now you see, you go with your own baby son to the beach, and your baby son make castle with the sands. And then all of a sudden, and now he's enjoying. Here yeah, all of a sudden tidal waves comes and washed away. Then how do you feel, how the son, oh, my son will cry, be crying. Why? Because he never thought that this built castle will be d destroyed, vanished. He thought it is permanent. Then did you feel sad or anything? No. Why? Because I know it is just for fun he built. I know it is not going to be permanent. So you see, it is a concept. So everything is in our mind, the way, how we look at, how we see. See, these are the very important things that we need to understand in day-to-day uh, -day life. We need to understand and applying our this dhamma into our daily life. We don't feel that we are dying people. We don't feel that we are for a short period of time here. We don't feel that uh, there is no so-called me and mine. We feel that we are eternally here. We feel that there is no suffering. As long as we stay in this way, we don't see the real truth. That's why Buddha said, Buddha was born to show this anicca dukkha, anatta, impermanent suffering and selflessness. And to see that, he's showing us a path. Sorry. Sila samadhi panya. You won't be able to see this thing, anicca impermanence, or whether there is suffering, or there is selflessness, until and unless, unless you see it with your own insight. With this naked eye, we won't be able to see that. We know that. We know it is suffering. Pihei vipa yoga dukkho, yampi chan nalabati thampi dukkhaan, 
Sanki chain, Panchupa, the Nakanda Dukka, we have our children, our family, our husband, wife, brothers, sisters. One day we slowly live in them. But we see them, but we never feel that. We simply shed tears, but we don't feel that, that there is a change. And we don't see that it is uh, something suffering. And we don't see that there is nothing to call, to grasp that mind me. So to see that, Sili patitaya naro sapanyo chittam panyancha bhavyam. Atapi nipako bhikkhu koma vijite chattam. So having observed precept, conduct yourself, behave yourself, and then develop your mind. When you develop your mind slowly, then slowly we begin to see things in their proper perspective. To see that, we need to meditation. Yada panyaya pasati, the panyaya that is a wisdom, the insight that we gain through practice of meditation. It's therefore, it will not be possible for any of us to see that there is suffering we understand. But we do not understand it. We don't see it from our inside. When we see from the inside, we see them yada as they are in their proper perspectives. So it is good to come to that level for that Buddha is in an ordinary way, in a simple way, he says us to Sila Samadhi Panya, to develop and then we can see these things properly. Then that is the Esamago Visuddhya, this is the only way, this is the path for liberation and salvation and emancipation. Otherwise, we will simply go on, go on, go on. We will not be able to face the situation one day when we come to the end of this life. That's the time we regret most of the time. Oh, I passed 50 years, 60 years, 70 years. Now I live in this world. I'm frightened. I did nothing. Recently, I was invited by a lady to go to the hospital to bless her dying husband. It's a critical condition. And she took me to the hospital. And when I went to the hospital, she simply told me, Venerable, please, you may go inside and chant and bless my husband. I simply asked, why don't you join me? She said, no, Bhante, this is my son, 22 years old, and my daughter, 20 years old. My husband does not want to see any of us. A CEO of a company, a 57-year-old man who is dying, I simply approached him. I didn't want to ask how you are doing, because I know that he is breathing hard, difficulty. I asked, you find it hard, difficult to breathe in? I just, yes, man. So I said, I'm just trying to see, think something good that I have done in my life so that I can say goodbye to this world when I live shortly. This is what comes many of the time to the minds of the people who are living this world. He didn't want to see his children, not his family, uh, simply a, a great CEO of a great big company. He's simply saying, forgetting everything, not even his own family. Because what is comes is nothing but what he has done good and bad. This is not a unique case, but this is the common stories everywhere that we have heard and we have seen. A British writer, you must have heard also him, Francis Story, a Buddhist, not by birth, but later he became Buddhist, a physicist by profession. He used to go out for a walk every day after work, at least two, three times a day, a week, with his colleague through the busy street of London to Hyde Park, 
for a walk. Each time he left for a walk, he had a handful of coins in his hand. And whenever he came across somebody who wanted to ask him money for, he simply dropped a coin each time. But his friends, colleagues, he told me, Francis, please don't encourage begging. You're simply encouraging begging. Don't do it. But Francis simply ignored their calls. But he continued to practice that. Each time when he went for jogging with them, he always used to drop a coin. This was his practice. Recently, Francis was diagnosed with cancer. And he was admitted to a very prestigious clinic. There, the specialist said that uh, he cannot perform any surgery. It's a very bad situation. He cannot do it. But we will give you at least two weeks to live. Unlike here in America and New York, they always tell to the patient the real condition. So they told him that you are going to live only two more weeks. So he was back to the, his ward. At that time, he asked the nurse who was attending him to give him a piece of paper and pencil. This, there he was writing. He was writing to, he was addressing his William, Johnny, Frank, all this, his colleagues who were his jogging partners. That, Friends, doctors have diagnosed me with cancer and they have given me two weeks to live. But I don't think that I am going to live that many days. I know physically, my physical condition, I am weak. I may live maybe another 48 hours. But at this moment, I am trying to think of something so that I can say goodbye to this world with a smile. Nothing comes to my mind. Not my wealth, not my family, not my achievement, not my profession. But the only thing that I practice, the generosity, dropping a coin. That click my mind. That is the only good thing that I can remember so that I can say goodbye to this world with a smile. Then he write, do good, be good. Buddha's final words he write. Sabha papa sakarna kusala supa sampada suchitta paryoda panang etam buddha anasasana. Do good, be good, and be happy. This is in a nutshell the Buddha's teaching. He was writing. So when the day is coming to us, one day this day is it's definitely, if it is not today, it is tomorrow, we cannot avoid. That's what Buddha said. You know, the happiness of a life, that I said this, for happiness. Atti sukha, boga sukha, anana sukha, anavajya sukha. He simply here says also, like some. Very wealthy person came and lay down, listening to the Buddha. So at that time, Buddha thought, it's right person to preach this. And he gave four things in the life that one can be very happy. Atthi sukha, ananu sukha, anavajya sukha, bhoga sukha. Atthi sukha, bhoga sukha. Atthi means to own, have to own wealth, property, to be rich, is also happiness. The Bhoga Sukha, to enjoy your wealth, is also happiness. Ananu Sukha, to be free from debt, debtlessness, is happiness. Anavajya Sukha, a proper conduct, right conduct, is also happiness. These four things, whether we want to follow or not, but without our knowledge, we are, it is happening within us. Atisuka, if you get one by one, Atisuka to be rich, to have wealth, to ownership, is good. 
without wealth, everything comes to sometimes to halt. No happiness, no miserable conditions. Yes. In the West, they call no money, no honey. But in the East, they call no honey, no money. But there is a meaning. Honey refers to the wife. Without the blessings of the wife, there is no prosperity sometimes. With the blessings of the wife, it's a great thing that people must understand. The blessings of a wife is very important. Not always. Sometimes you find wives also are. <laughs> so, so it is very important to understand these things. Many people, recently somebody came to send two lovers there and with the wife. And she wanted to talk to me and uh, I was happy to. I was sitting with him and see, I saw this lady, I said, uh, she's with you, yes. Uh, uh, why don't you invite her? Mm, is it okay? I said, why not? By all means. He came. Then I asked, do you want her to see me? They told me, do you want her to see me? So I haven't seen you before. Yes. Said, uh, my business is going down last few months, maybe almost a year. And um, so any blessings? I said, uh, can I ask certain questions? before going on. I asked, how is your relationship with your wife? He said, La, so, so, he said. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? I said, uh, so, your office is outside, your business is outside, so you come home, yes. Is your wife happy when you come home? Mm, said, uh, I guess so. But uh, I said to her, maybe, but I feel that she is not happy when you come home. How do you feel? Because your business is down. Then I said, because when you come home, if your wife doesn't like that your presence at home, that means something is wrong with you. You have created an atmosphere. You talk not nice words. You look at very violently, not peacefully, joyfully. So you, even your sight has become a kind of hassle. So try to make her happy. Make the situation, environment happy, nice. So the house will be a nice place for divine beings. Now your house is good for devils because you have created that situation. Because when you look at some wife, your wife, when you use bad word, harsh word, not kind words, that create a tense situation that is not good for divine beings. Atmosphere is not good. Always house look very bleak, dark, uncontrollable. When you go to certain houses, you feel very full of life, full of life. But when you come to your house, the situation is different. The most important thing that you have not maintained a good relationship with your wife, try to talk nice words, make her happy. Is there anything that you appreciate in your wife? Tell me. Is she became angry? No. How is she? I am quick tempered. Now you see, quick tempered, you use bad words, and that makes her angry. And thereby creating the atmosphere very bad. Then that place is not good for human living. And your success, prosperity, good health, everything is going down, draining. So nobody else to be blamed. You are responsible. The Buddha said four things. If a house, wife and husband is in good terms, friendly, nicely, that house is occupied by God and a goddess. If the house is 
The wife and husband is fighting using excessive and abusive words and everything. That house is occupied by female devils, the male devils. And the health and prosperity of the people is going down. Even it is happening to the children. So it's good to create that situation if you are looking for a happy life. So these are the miserable situations of all family and day-to-day -day life. Many people in the world, they are having these problems. And Buddha has that answer. So in the same way, when we talk about uh, many things that is taking place around us, we want to look into Buddha's teaching. Buddha has an answer for all that. The absence of the knowledge of Buddha's teaching sometimes creates troubles among the members of the family. Family members, wife and children. So one day Buddha was walking for Pindapatha. And one man came across Buddha and said, Oh, by accident he saw the Buddha. And he said, oh, Lord Buddha, please forgive me. I am ashamed of myself. Please forgive me. I have nothing to give to you. I have nothing to give to you. I feel very ashamed of myself. I'm so poor. The Buddha said, you're not poor. Then Buddha, he said, oh, I'm not poor. No, you're not poor. You have two hands? Yes. Do good things with your hands. And you have a mouth? Yes. Smile and talk nice words. This is the best psychology. Smile. Talk nice things. Talk good things. If you have nothing to talk, then keep silent. Smile. Smile is the greatest gift. When you smile, you are giving dana. When you make others happy, you are deriving great merits. Because giving others happy, making others happy is a great thing. Absence of a smile, the families are broken down. The relationship between wife and children, and the parents and children, and all uh, damaging because absence of one small thing is smile. If you can smile, you become a pleasant person. You are a peace giver and you make others happy, thereby you also become happy. This is what the Buddha taught to him. And you see, if, if you have a smile, your family will be good, your neighbors will be good, the atmosphere will be good. So peaceful coexistence, so how nice. I remember I was giving a talk in Paris. I told about this story. And one lady came to me, and she told me also, I understand this is a hard thing, I will try. I said, smile. So next day she followed my other talk and she came and told me, Bhante, you told me to smile so you will be happy. Yesterday I took a public bus and somebody was sitting. I sat in front of her and I smiled. She changed the seat. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> so how come this happens, he said. <laughs> so these are things. We cannot change the world. But later on they will learn these things. It is very important to understand these important small things. So one can be happy when one will live happily, peacefully, joyfully. So ati sukha, boga sukha, anun sukha, anavajita. Ati, to have wealth is good. Buddha has taught how to earn, how to save, how to enjoy your life, and how to save. Eke ne bhoge bhunje ye, divi kamam payoje, this is the most advanced economical theories, the Buddhas, 2,500 years ago. But even today, so-called economists find that it is one of the best 
teachings of the Buddha. When you have a hundred, you part of it, one part of it, you must not necessarily earn and earn and earn. Enjoy. Eat. Give whatever that from that part to others. Help. Then it is the right way to enjoy your wealth. Many people, they do not, they do not eat. Many CEOs sometimes say, say oh, Bhante, I was so busy, I didn't eat, I'm, I'm suffering from gastric now. So busy. Food, not in time. I have a problem. And when my gastric gets more angry, when I get home, my wife is also crying, shouting at me. So the situation. So it is good to you enjoy your meal and also share your what you give to dana. Dana is not that something coming from out. What you have to eat, you are sharing it. It's a great thing. We give it to others. Otherwise people, you see, most of the people, sometimes they do not know what to do with their wealth. Uh, recently, a wealthy woman from Florida. She has super rich woman. She has only one dog. Many servants look after the garden, house, and two or three for to look after the dog also. And this lady, though she spent, but not eating properly. And at the time, when she was almost to say goodbye, she was now thinking what to do with my wealth. At that time, she knew that it was $14 million in her account. She wrote the last will in the name of the dog. <laughs> in the name of the dog. And she died. How she died? With a bunch of keys biting. Keys for the jewelries and others biting. You can imagine where she will be. Attachment. My, my. The wealth is gone. Didn't enjoy, didn't eat properly. Yeah. Then when she is gone, the, the servants here got together, they rushed to the banks. Soon after the funeral, everything. When they went to the bank, they said the, we are here to claim the money. Oh. And they asked, who is this? Name so and so, is the name of the dog. Can the dog sign? <laughs> so, sorry, we cannot give money. Dog cannot sign. Just simply waste of wealth. This, uh, then we can imagine where this woman will be. Sometimes wealth is good, but wealth is also ruining somebody's life here and hereafter. So in moderation, Buddha said that Ekena Bhoge Bunje, part of, divide your wealth into four parts and take one part of it and enjoy and share with others so that you, Dvihi Kammam Phayoje, it's very important, invest 50% of that. Buddha said, Tanhaya Jayati Soko, all that, but Buddha says, invest 50% of that. Chatut tampin in the happy year, the last part, save it. In an emergency, it will be useful. You see, all the economists in the world, they praise this method, that way. So this is the way that we can be very happy, joyful, when we live such a beautiful life. With moderation, with mindful, when we live when we earn and when we enjoy the life. And these are the guidelines that Buddha has left, laid down for the people to follow. And if you don't, then families always have problems and troubles. It's not uh, particularly one 
for it has sometimes nothing to do with the wealth. The coexistence, relationship, friendship. If there is no friendship, tolerance, then there is no peace. After all, what is the meaning of the life if there is no peace? Not to have a big house and no peace, like Socrates. Socrates, we all know. Tolstoy, Gorky, all these writers, they know. Gorky was a great writer, but out of 24 hours, he was maybe about 18 hours outside the house under a tree. Because, he said, there is no peace at home. So it is understanding, the absence of one smile. If you can smile, that's nice Socrates. Socrates was a, a reading, writing, reading, writing in the late night. One day his wife said, it's time, you better switch off, it's time to sleep, now it's getting late. Socrates said, okay, sure. Then again, continue to read and write, read and write. Second time wife came and said, no, you don't switch off, I can't sleep, shouted and shouted. Okay, okay, I come. I switch off. Third time she came, Socrates simply ignored her, said, okay, okay, simply. She ran out of patience, he went to the kitchen and took a bucket of water and poured onto him in the middle of night. Now you look at how Socrates answered. He simply stood and did like this, and he said, it was thundering, now it is raining. <laughs> you see how only a great people can see. Only a great people. There's many similarities, similar stories in the life of the Buddha. This, uh, so it is very simple thing. We forget these simple things and we are unable to apply to our day-to-day -day life. To be mindful, to enjoy, to be happy, smile, and talk nicely. Doesn't cost anything. So it has become uh, this mindfulness. It's uh, everywhere now in the West, mindful, mindful. Now you even find the mindful ice cream, everywhere. Because mindful ice cream, you eat, slowly eat mindful. So mindfulness, talking about mindfulness. So mindfulness, Buddha's mindfulness, original mindfulness. Very important. Now everybody is practicing meditation. Sometimes people just keep a stretch of Buddha or picture of Buddha and look at the Buddha, though they do not know very much about them, but they at least looking at the Buddha's image gives me a peace and harmony. Indian Prime Minister Madam Gandhi's father, he was a Prime Minister. Prime Minister's office was full of pictures of the Buddha, 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 Buddha. Nothing other than. So when the Prime Minister who came, visited him, he asked me, what is this? You have only Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. What is this? He said, he said India has almost a one billion population. Every Indian is a problem to me. So when I think of each time I'm loaded with the one billion problems, so when I slowly open my eyes and look at the Buddha, I forget everything, it gives me peace. Looking at the Buddha is a great peace. So to see the Buddha, who is that? Your dhammam pasati, somam pasati. If you want to see me, if you want to see me, see my teaching. Teaching is not reading the Diga Nikaya, Majjhima Nikaya, but just try to develop your mindfulness. It's the greatest gift. People are now trying to apply daily, daily, daily. Everywhere. Whether it is President George Bush, President Clinton, President Clinton, or Joe, President Obama, or many people. Even Tina Turner. I was teaching in a, four or five weeks ago in Denmark, and uh, in the beach, on the beach, all students, uh, school children from 13 to 17, they, were, they wanted to do it on a beach, on the beach, so I was conducting meditation classes. So they are simply Catholics, 
Christians, doesn't matter. I told them, you remain as you are. There is no requirement by Buddha that we have to register and baptize, so there isn't something like that in Buddhism. Just remain as you are, just practice meditation. So it is, it is, it's, a, it's a trend of the day. Queen Elizabeth of England, she hired an agency, she wanted to have a man who could discuss with her Buddhism and meditation. Having hired, they found a man from Sri Lanka who was an expert in Pali Buddhism and also he has done in neuroscience in uh, Cambridge. And this man has been conducting meditation to Queen Elizabeth for the last five, six years. And it, he had to keep this a secret. Only recently, Queen, I think, has given permission to him. Why not let the people, if they want to know, let the people that I am doing meditation. So until then, he kept this a secret. Now it is a, it's a well-known secret. Because now, she is practicing meditation every month, two times a month, this man, the professor has to go there and stay weekend and guide Queen how to meditate, how to meditate. So it's Prince Charles, so it's Prince Harris. And only last week, Prince Charles, with a visiting Chinese master, he converted a church into a Buddhist temple. So there are many queens here. How many queens are meditating? I see many queens here. How many queens are meditating? <laughs> eh? Yes? It's good to practice. This is just a technique. It's good technique. It's not difficult. It's only way is to see. You can see who you are when you try to practice meditation. Then you can see how hard how difficult, how untamed I am. Then you can see how uncontrolled I am. It will, it will help you to be a, uh, uh, what you call it, a disciplined person. It will help you to be calm, quiet, uh, physically and mentally. When you continue to do that daily, as uh, slowly you will develop it little by little. Kamaru rajata seva toka toka khani khani. Little by little, but surely. And it is a right effort. Tanhan nisaya, tanham pahatabhang. The Buddha said, have tanha, tanha means have the great desire to get rid of negative great desire. Have positive desire to get rid of a negative desire. That means you struggle, you get courage, somehow I am, to get rid of what? To get rid of your attachment, desire, anger, hatred, all these things. So when you get little by little rid of this, you will feel yourself calm, quiet, physically. And mentally also you feel a kind of peace. And even the people will notice there is some changes are taking place in your physical body that can be visible, obviously visible, on your face. This is the teaching of the Buddha. This is what we have to. If we don't do practice meditation, then you are not a Buddhist. I was very happy to see that you could observe five precepts without going through the books. But there are many Buddhists who have been for the last 15, 20, 30 years, but he still has to read the book to observe five precepts. No, these things we must know by heart to pay the homage to the Buddha, Dhamma Sangha. Some verses from Dhamma Pada, so beautiful. A Spanish Prime Minister, before he goes to bed, when he retires from the daily activities, he has requested his wife to have a book. Dhamma father. So one copy this side to his bed, other side also one copy. They both read one verse and they discuss. How did you understand this word? How did I understand this word? Then they look into the book. That becomes a part of the life. 
those are the people who do not have access to Buddha's teaching, access to Sanghas easily. But you are fortunate, you listen to Dhamma, listen to Dhamma, listen to Dhamma. But if you listen, 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 even if you memorize whole Tripitaka, if you don't put it into practice, that's no. Sila meva sutta sayo. Not the knowledge, but the practice is important. One time, at the time of Buddha's Parinirvana, final passing away, and the monks said there are some, some monks, they were supposed to be here to pay their last respect to Buddha, but they were busy, they didn't come. Buddha said, they are my true disciples. So, Sakkaroti, Garukaroti, Maneti, Pujeti, Paramahi Puja, Patimati Puja, one who respect, venerates me, worship me, it is he who practices my teaching. So be a part of the Dhamma. It is good to practice. It's good to learn the Dhamma little by little. But whatever you know, try to apply it to your daily life. To applying it to the daily life, the best way is to practice meditation. So it is very important to at least 5-10 minutes a day. 5-10 minutes a day is doesn't matter whenever you want, wherever you want, just practice meditation. It's good. So that it will help you to be also good. Many people in the West, they are practicing, but they, certain things, it's difficult to uh, progress. They find it hard for them to progress because there are certain things they do not want to give up. One day I was going in Canada in a, about three or four o'clock in the through a park like this. I came across a, a lone hair beard with a, a blonde white guy sitting cross-legged and meditating with a glass of beer, a bottle of beer inside <laughs> front of him. And uh, I look at him, I said, he smiled, oh, he's so nice, to, uh, I am blessed, he said. Ah, oh, yes, so nice, because I haven't seen monkey so good. I said, uh, what are you doing? You, oh, he looked at me, yes, nice weather, breezing air, cool, nice thing, and cold beer. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to have all these things, but progress is there. Desire is there, but certain things they do not like to give up or they cannot give it up. So you have to. So progress is come. Kammaru rajata sevato goto kankhanita. Things that we have to give up slowly, 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 by little by little, but always constructive progress is important. So it's good to separate, give 10 minutes a day, five minutes a day. St you might find it hard. You might find it hard because hard in the sense that, oh, I cannot keep my mind. I cannot keep. One day, only here at the Sentul, I think about two, three days ago, a man who's practicing Tai Chi, a long time practicing, and he's also said to be part-time teacher of Tai Chi. And he told me, I asked, do you practice meditation? No, it's hard for me. I said, you are teaching Tai Chi, and Tai Chi is a form of meditation. And I told him what is the origin of Tai Chi, and I told him, you must do this. He said, it's hard, I cannot, I tried. No, if you practice in Tashi, you must be able to do meditation easily. Because the origin of Tashi, Karate, Kung Fu, all came at the temple. In China, the monks were practicing, meditating. And they tired of sitting. They simply wanted to stretch their legs. And they simply stand and went out for walking meditation. Then they went walking meditation. <laughs> Some people <clears throat> outside, they simply, they, it was not a common scene, haven't seen before, a difficult, different sight, a monk walking, and they simply came and pushed them. So what these monks, they did, they didn't react. They simply slowly <laughs> pushed them. Then those people were down. And this, this is what we call Tai Chi. 
and that technical uh, kung fu and karate. So the origin of karate is from the temple, the meditation, and all that started from the meditation. So, so this is not, that's why even today when the people go for karate to study, they sit for a while for meditation because it's not a physical force, but it's a mental force. The monks who came from the monastery forest, they simply exercised their mental energy and let it through the hands and post. So those guys float down. So it's the same way. The meditation is technique, a method to develop our mind. The mind can make miracles. That today the m computer is faster. But in 15, 20 years time, you will see mind will be faster than computer. Because it, it was an invention of the man. And man, the mind will be faster, the computer will be taken over by the mind. So it is so it is simply a meditation, it's a technique, a method to look at myself, why I am angry, why I am uh, quick tempered, why I am restlessness. All that the answer is within yourself. There is nobody. Everything is within myself. Atanami Patamang Suddhi Asuddhi Pachantang Nanya Manyan Kilesi. You must do it. There is nobody to curse or reward or punish you. So you have to do these things. So don't, that's why we very often we give talks and meditation classes in, in churches. I was giving a, a, a talk at church in Florida. I talk to people about uh, death. People don't like to. I know, I told them, I know many people don't like to listen to the word of death. Some people even do not like to go to the funerals. Some people, they do not like to hear the word death. But when the death comes, they are totally disappointed. Why? Sabbe satta marisanti. This is a, the a eternal truth that we do not want to accept. What is that eternal truth? Sabbe satta marisanti. All living beings die. This is a fact. If you know, if you accept that fact, then you will never be disappointed at the time of death. I have been to many, many, many uh, places where the people are dying. But for the first time in my life, maybe I have been many death places, dying funerals. For me to go to a funeral and uh, to go to any other place, yes, I don't feel at all difference. Recently, one girl asked when I, she came to the temple, I said, I am going to funeral. She asked me, Pante, you always go to funeral. Why don't you go to weddings? I said, hey, nobody invites me. You think. <laughs> <laughs> so, she, so, for saying, go to wedding or funeral, it's just two sides of the coins. Death comes with birth, birth, death, birth, death, birth, death. Only the Buddha in the universe. He went one step further. Birth to death, death to deathlessness. When we talk about deathlessness, then people. So that to see the deathlessness, the only way to yada panya apacity, when we develop this meditation, when we go further, then we can see these things. For that, you must, if you are a Buddhist, you must do that. Don't miss this opportunity. Because kicho manusya patilabhu, to be born as a human being, especially a human being with all means and luxuries and happiness, and it is a great blessing. If you can see the world, millions of people without food, millions of people without clothes, millions of people without any access to the medication, you haven't seen. Only a handful of people enjoying having good meal and thing. I questioned this to somebody one day, uh, uh, an intellectual. He said, part of the world must 
uh, starve in order to feed the rest of the world. He says, but it's no. Why? Then you are blessed. You are blessed. This is what we call karma. You have done good and we are benefiting, enjoying the benefit of those good things. So in order to maintain, Buddha said, Punyanche puruso kaira, kaira te tam puna puna, tam me kanyan chandan kaira te suko punya suchio. Do it good, be good, more and more, so that you will be happy here and hereafter because the accumulation of good is always good for the happiness, joy, and success and pleasure. So the from pleasurable, miserable to pleasurable is the only way, is that. So it's the time. Any question? What time? What, is, what, is that? Eh? what time it is? 10.15. Okay, we can continue. So, yes, we must. Uh, I have no watch. I must. Uh, I have no watch here. <laughs> ah, yes, good. Okay, yes, okay, good. So, it is very important that what I said about this uh, meditation. Some people, they do not have access. I was just. Uh, I went to a six nation tour, five days in Sweden, five days in Denmark, eight, uh, four days in France, and seven days in Germany, and eight days in Switzerland. All these places, non-Buddhist population, all non-Buddhist population, and their only way of sort of a meditation, meditation, meditation. So meditation is the only thing that they want. Because they have wealth, they have health, everything is there, but they do not have what they want, looking for a joyful, uh, uh, what you call, a peace. A peace of mind does not come simply you are staying at home or just uh, enjoy your meal and no. Those are temporary happiness. Those are the people who suffer from so many things. And stress, tension. Stress, tension is the, and then coming out, sugar, diabetes, heart patient. You must have heard of a Goenka, the great master of, what is, how he started. He was suffering from uh, stress. And uh, he didn't have no medication. So he simply, his method was meditation. And later he became a great master. Because it addresses the problems. A great general in Burma, Myanmar, who, as he was a general in Myanmar, he was sent to. Uh, in America, uh, a great hospital where all these presidents were treated as he was a general. So the experts, they tried to diagnose what he was suffering from. They didn't find anything. But finally, having kept him so many months, they told him that, uh, I don't think that there is any necessity for you to stay here because your body does not absorb medication. So it's better if you want, you can go there and die because you have only one month to live. So immediately the authorities in Myanmar took him back to Myanmar. So what to do? Even in America, they cannot find no cure. So this man, General, was out. By the way he found when he was just hanging around, he found a Buddhist monk was going out for begging. He said, can I talk? To you? Yes. Uh, I would like to have a chat with you, if you permit me. OK, sure, he's an elderly monk. He took him there. Then he explained to him, this is what has happened, why I'm here. So whether if you can heal me something, if you can do something. Then he said, all right. Then. Uh, you want to come and stay with me? Yes. Because he has no choice. He knows. Anything, no options. He went with the monk. 
he told him to be vegetarian, non-smoker. So no alcohol at all, no temple there isn't. <laughs> so don't smoke, be vegetarian, no alcohol, and cut down your phone. Right? Then you simply follow my technique. There is no guarantee, but we, ho we are hopeful. So there's the only statue of Buddha. And this is, though he was born a Buddhist general, but uh, he is a general in the army, but not general in the Buddhist teaching. But he didn't know even. So he told, look at the Buddha statue. As much as you can, you just keep on looking and don't think of other partner. And then try to be peaceful. His only technique was meditation was looking at the Buddha statue, peaceful statue. Yeah. So after <coughs> three weeks time, this general said that uh, I feel a little more relaxed and comfortable. So he said, maybe I contact the government officers who is responsible army. He said, okay. Then by the time he, this happened, almost more than one month. Then they found that uh, something's there. They immediately, the government authorities sent him back to America for the same treatment. Then they saw the, all those experts in the hospital. They checked him. I mean, checked after a couple of days. They simply asked, what did you eat? Then he asked, why? What did you eat? The general said, why, why, why? Because your body now absorbs medication. There's something, a change, wonderful change has taken place in your physical body. Now your body absorbs medication. So it is something that a mind is miracle, we can miracle, healing powers. And the words of the Buddha also extremely important. The words of the Buddha, they're coming from a not ordinary person's mouth, from an enlightened being. Never a word of Buddha, vain words came out of the Buddha's mouth. We chant, we faith, paritta. There's a word full of enlightened, the very important, powerful words that has the power to cure, heal, and chase away even demon beings. The words of the Buddha, so paritta we call it. So there's some people wanted, some people wanted to test this. So there are many stories, but simple one example I just want to give. Again, the, the living chief monk of New York Buddhist Vihara, who is now 94 years old, who taught me Buddhist culture in Sri Lanka. And this monk is 94 years old now. When he was 91 years old, he was admitted to New York Hospital. The doctors kept him about four or five months. And then when they found that his body doesn't absorb medication, what they did, this is American system, they put him to another ward that is called waiting room for death. No treatment, because it's a cost for the government. So they just uh, let the, this is a normal practice. So the venerable was put into that ward. And when the devotees went, they found it. The doctor especially said that, well, there's no point of treating him. He's all close to the death. So there's wasting of time. There are many patients to take care of. So no need to give medication. So the, the people who went there, oh, we cannot let our master to die like this. We cannot let. He's our master. Then the doctor said, OK, you can take him. They took him, and they kept at the temple the same time. The monks in Staten Island, Boston, Washington, D.C., and West Virginia. Five temples every day, every day at 8 p.m. 
including this temple in New York, the monks were chanting, chanting, same time. And etena satchavajena hotute jayaman. By the power of this Dhamma, noble qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, may the Venerable Master be well and happy. Continued for one month and end of the now the doctors came and checked. Bodies absorbing medication when he was 91. Only a few months ago he celebrated his 94th birthday. The Buddha's chanting has such a power. All this misfortune at homes. If you can chant one sutra and you are inviting divine beings and chasing away all these demons. In America, many houses in Europe, haunting houses. You can't live some abandoned house, many abandoned houses. The real estate agent who is selling a house must issue a certificate that this house is free from haunting. Yes, otherwise he will be sued. Yes, because the situation is that. So is that, because there's no technique, they don't know. But here, we simply chant a sutra, all evil spirit go. That is the power of Dhamma. It's not the power of Buddha Dhamma. Buddha's power of Dhamma, a universal power. So that's why, even when somebody is pregnant, a safe delivery, and somebody is dying, safe, goodbye, all this can be arranged by the chanting of Buddha. When you have a chanting, a blessed to the family, blessed to the family, house, an invitation to the divine beings. So it is good always to practice that part of the uh, teaching. Uh, when you teach these things, when you educate your children to do this way, the children will be happy. The parents will be happy. Uh, many children sometimes curse their parents because they have not done their duties. A young girl, he came and asked us to go for dana. A young girl, and it was to transfer marriage, share marriage with his, her departed parents. And I went with monks, and you know, the monk to the house. When I went, there was nothing, no statue, nothing. And she thought that I am carrying a bag of merits to share the merits with her parents. So no preparation, it's almost 11.30. I said, then we chant a little bit, I explained. Then 11.30, 11 11.45, I said, uh, now dana time. She asked me, do you want to eat? We were invited for dana. Then I explained. She rushed down and put a bowl of soups to, to two of us, two monks. Then I explained. At the end of the sermon, she was crying. And she had this to say, I love my parents, but I do not forgive them for not teaching these things to me. This is what many children, people try to send them to London, Australia, New Zealand, all these parts of the world for better education. But with that, they lose their children. Because these are the basic teaching that we need to teach to our children at home, train them. The discipline is the best thing. Otherwise, you will lose your children, and children will lose parents too. One man from New York who came and became a monk for a period of one month, and he went back because he came to Sri Lanka for one month for temporary ordination with the permission from his wife, and when he went, back, he was teaching two of his kids, only five and six or seven years old kids, not uh, five or four or something, like that. two kids. One day he was calling me and asked, I asked, why are you so silent? No, my two kids are sitting for meditation. I said, meditation? No, no, I am teaching them before they go to Montessori school, I'm teaching them to sit calmly without moving their hands, opening their eyes, without scratching head, just 
a physical training so that later I will teach them how to control mind. This is exactly what the Buddha says. Vina kaya bhavana, chitta bhavana natiti. Without physical restraint, there is no mental restraint. So it is important to physical restraint. So it is good to teach these kids at the early age of their life so that parents can be happy, proud of their children. Children will also be happy, proud of their children. Otherwise, when the parents are gone, no children to even to share the merits. No children to share the merits. A doctor, I don't want to name him, he died recently, and it was myself and uh, central chief, myself, we went to the house, and when we went there, only two daughters were eating, they were eating and enjoying the ice cream. A father's body is there because until we went there, because they didn't want to call the nirvana to come and pray. But, and these children, they call later date for about the death and the sharing merits. No, I'm busy at the weekend. I had to go somewhere. The answers from the children. How on earth this thing can happen in a Buddhist family? A Buddhist is not a title. It has to be full of duties and responsibilities about it. We must teach children what are the duties and responsibilities of their towards their parents and the parents' responsibility and duties towards children. This is what in the Chigalova, the Sutra, all is about. And that's what the, all this uh, Western world, the prosperous uh, so-called uh, affluent societies, they ask from the East, you want nothing but simply Sigaluva, the Sutra, that will have guidelines for the children, a happy bringing up of a family. And without these things, the society is already collapsed and it will be going to ruin. So we won't, don't like to see something like this happening to our children, our families. If we are Buddhist, then we need to apply this teaching of the Buddha. And then you one day when you leave this world, you can leave this world with a smile. Because you lived a happy life and you taught your children to live a happy life. In case if you need any merits or anything, then your children, you can still depend on your children. Hopefully they will remember you. <laughs> but that's why Buddha said, Atta Deepa Viharate, don't depend on anybody. Don't depend on anybody. Don't count on anybody. Count on yourself. First of all, you. Don't count on others so that you will be happy. Happiness is the most important thing. The happiness doesn't come by somewhere. It is by way of practicing these noble things, by way of doing, applying this, all these good things, so that we can be happy here and hereafter. These are the most important things that we must always look for, that many people do not have access, because there is no access to Dhamma, no access to the Sangha, no access to the meditation. So it's good. I remember one time I was there, somebody, he was at the airport in Geneva, and not Geneva, in uh, uh, Amsterdam. He came to me and he said, I have not seen, this is the first time I see a monk. I have seen on TV, but this first time I have the opportunity to talk to a monk. Ah, I see. So he was very happy. Then he told me that uh, I would like to get to your address so that I can contact you. I gave my address. And when I went to India, I get a call from him. Then he said, I would like to come and see me. I said, uh, is there any way that we can discuss the matter on the phone, over the phone? Uh, yes, that also can be done, but I still want to come. 
So I he called me daily, daily. Then I said, okay, if you want to come, you can come. He came. Then he came, he said, I would like to invite you for conducting a half a day meditation. I said, okay, how do you know? I have heard of these things, but I don't know anything. But I thought, because this is my contact, first contact with the monk, so I would like to invite if you can, if you can conduct this. I said, all right, okay. So he said, uh, as usual, when we go, they arrange our tickets and everything. Then I flew to Canada, he was from Canada. And he came to Toronto and he took me on the Saturday evening and he put me in a hotel, it's about uh, 100 kilometers away from Toronto, and uh, he put me in a hotel. The next day, early morning, he came and took me, and I went to, you say, in front of a church. A church. I stood him, uh, okay. Then I went inside, the exactly 100 people. All white Canadian 100 people including the priest. <laughs> yes. They organized a meditation class. Retreat. One day, half day retreat. And what they want to do? Meditation. Our message is, you remain as you are. Whether you are Christian or Catholic, doesn't matter, you remain as you are. But to practice meditation, what we need is only sila. And you remain, it doesn't matter whether you are Christian or Muslim or anybody, but follow this. And at the end of the, they want to do maybe next year, but it's completely, I can show you maybe even in my telephone, the picture, whole church, you know, the picture. So there are certain, in certain churches sometimes before the service, they say that there's a monk is coming to give a talk, so people come. But they don't let the monks talk. First they do the service, because if they do the service later, and talk first, after the talk they will go. So they want to keep the people. <laughs> so they do the <laughs> service first, then let the monks talk later. So these are things that things are happening, taking place in different places. So the, the desire for Buddha's teaching and meditation is growing everywhere and good to we therefore it is I am precisely pressing on you the importance of the meditation it is what the Buddha's purpose Santosu Bhagavad Samatha Dhammante having crossed become tame I teach others to be tame right having cross over the, the, the cycle of birth, samsara. I'm teaching others to say. So this is the message of the Buddha. The very important, the most important message is follow me. And he has given many times, he has said, I tell you to follow me. I tell you to follow me because I have practiced, I have done. I guarantee you I guarantee you, you follow. I promise you, I guarantee you, there is the peace, the desired expectations, because I have experience. Eh? I have experience. Tinno so Bhagavad Tarana, I have been crossed over. So, this is the message and the mission of the Buddha. Not necessary to don't do this and do, no. Everything is to understand the real nature, the order of the nature, come into exist, then exist, then vanish. This is happening, 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 happening. And birth, death, birth, death, birth, death. How many of, how many of you can say that you haven't been my father, my mother, my wife, my husband? The long journey of samsara, we must have seen many times one day one lady she was sitting in a corner of the buddha and he said can you remember me but the nose yes 
Brother she has been a mother to Buddha in the long journey of samsara five times. It's crack. Mind is so vast. So mind is the most important thing. Manasache padutena bhasativa karotiva. Even if you do something good or bad, it's coming after you. Every moment, every day from the morning to evening, millions of thoughts, every thought has a power of changing our life. Whether it is good or bad, but it is the thing that is deciding our life. Whether you like it or not, whether you like something, if you go for it, then it, there is an impact on that. There's a British lady, she was a, a pregnant lady. And she was, she was having a strong desire. The desire, she was called normally a queen of hot dog. So fond of uh, what you call the fast food. So this lady was pregnant. She wanted to see how the sausages were made. So she asked her husband, uh, insisting, I want to go to factory to see how the sausages were made. So this became a headache for him. So he told his colleagues at the work office that my wife is insisting me that I should take her to a sausage factory. How should I do? The colleagues also said, you must do it because she's pregnant. You must satisfy her. So with the friend, they took her to a sausage factory. And then she saw how the sausages were, this the piece of legs, young hands, and here the, all these things, and going through the machine and coming from the other end as sausages. So, so very happy, clapping hand, even the taking the pictures. This lady is pregnant, she's taking pictures and so happy. And <coughs> then after, when she went, then very often she's watching that, enjoying. Sausages were made, so nice, happy. After a month and a half, she was going to give birth. In the clinic, she gave a birth. The baby's face was completely calf. Hands and legs, cow's legs, only physical. He has simply a calf. You see, the food for the unborn child is the thoughts. Whatever you think, it's not in a physical form, but whatever you think, this is the food for the baby. So it's likeness towards the car, hot dogs and how it's made, and made the baby become a calf. How when the baby come out, how you hug and kiss? You can't kiss a calf. Your baby is no more baby, it's a calf. Completely face of a calf, cow. This is the, so many things. So they were a little bit upset and asked the doctors, whatever they did, say, deform, deform, how did this happen? Doctor, well, somebody has said, oh, we don't know, this is what has happened, this is what has happened. We have no answer. Somebody by accident said, you better go and see the Buddha. <laughs> but in fact, Buddha had the answer. He didn't know who Buddha was. He simply said that. Better go and see the Buddha. Because when the child, is, when the woman is conceived in the womb, the baby is in the womb, he doesn't take this physical food. See? Or that what they take is simply a thoughts, good thoughts, good behavior. When you read good books, you develop minds, it has impact on your baby, unborn baby. You talk nice words, it has impact on your unborn baby. So if you won't have a good babies, that's the time you become quiet and practice meditation and also practice generosity. And so that your baby will be a, a nice, you will be fortunate to have good babies. Things are happening in a dramatic way in the world today, the birth, how they will, things are happening. Recently, I saw a book written by 
an American, his book name was uh, 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 My Life Before, Before This Life. My Life Before This Life. And it's a very nice story. One uh, uh, niece was looking after her uncle. Her uncle is very sick. And she is looking after her uncle attending well to his needs, everything. Then the uncle who is very old, you now sick, is telling his niece, you have been fantastic niece. You have been taking care of me so nice. I must be grateful to you. I will become a daughter. I will be born as your son, daughter, or say child. Then this uh, niece said, oh, uncle, I'm not yet married. I'm only 19. She said, no, doesn't matter. I will be born in your womb as your child because I want to take care of you. You have been very grateful to me. Then uh, she said, uncle, how do you say these things? How do you prove that you are going to? Then with difficulty, he raised his hand and said, look at here. Three red birthmarks, big red birthmarks. So when you will have a baby, you see these three birthmarks, then you think that it was me. It will be me. So sir, uncle died. After 18 months after his death, this, the marriage wedding took place and she was going to, she was given the birth and he was admitted to hospital. And the baby, when she delivered, the doctors placed the baby on her chest. Out of curiosity, she simply, simply raised the hands to the baby like this. And she see these three big red birthmarks. Now she was said, oh, I was so joy, happy to have a baby. Now, whether I am hugging my uncle or my son. <laughs> these are things, these are miracles. And these things happen. The Buddha's teaching is there. No answer anywhere. Buddha has the te answer for all these things. So it's good to learn Buddha's teaching. And more you turn, more you apply to your daily life. Your family will be good teaching all those noble qualities and important things. And make sure that never leave your house. Never let your children leave your house. Never let your husband leave your house without kneeling down before the Buddha. Let them pay respect. It takes only one minute, not even a minute, that will bring the prosperity, joy, happiness, and success to the family. That's the only way to address the issue of miserable condition and to have a pleasurable condition. May you all be well and happy. May the blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha bless you. May all devas protect you from harm and trouble. Abhivadana silis nicham vadha pachayinu Chattaru dhamma vadhanti ayu annu sukhambalam Ayuraru ugya sampatti sagga sampatti mevach Atho nibbana sampatti iminati samijhatu Sahara